So good morning and uh, welcome to another episode of um, Mathematical Foundation of Human Air Robot. So we are talking about human air robot, how to model them, and in that context, we have learned the fundamental modeling technique using the H principle, uh, making a uh, making a joint relation, okay, uh, in the form of forward channel. So this is what we have done. Okay. And then we talked about uh, different kinds of sensors. Uh, now, to execute motion in a controlled fashion, we need uh, um, sensors, right? Uh, just like uh, my hand uh, with this pain is moving somewhere. Uh, so I need, uh, if I would like to reach to the blackboard so, or whiteboard, so my Visual perception is telling me that how far it is and then I will go there. So continuously visual perception will tell me that this is uh, my whiteboard where I would like to reach and then I will reach there and then I will make some trajectory uh, which uh, without uh, visual perception is very difficult uh, to do. And not only that, when I am putting my uh, finger trip with a pen on a whiteboard, and following some trajectory, following some trajectory like this, okay, uh, robot. So these are all trajectory. Uh, is a, a man-made. So these are all trajectory, right? My sentences. And then you see that I am putting some kind of velocity characteristics and some pressure of. I am, I am putting some pressure. If I do not put some pressure, it will be like this, okay. So optimally, I am controlling also uh, that how much uh, pressure or force I will create so that my desired trajectory can be followed. So all this control at the uh, gra grassroots level has to be done by getting um, feedback from sensors. In this, in this case, there is some tactile sensor and I have some prehension that how much uh, pressure I should put and uh, with how much based on learning for me based on learning but for robot it has to be planned properly uh, only thing which I am trying to tell you that sensors are the primary requirement for executing control okay sensors could be virtual sensors could be physical here now has several physical sensors it's a, it has two cameras Okay, it has uh, microphones, four microphones, four sonar, and it has two speakers, and then tactile, 10 different kinds of tactile sensors. Tactile sensors are sensors which are activated by touch, physical touch, okay? So, at the robot uh, head here, there is a tactile sensor. So, if you just uh, touch with my hand, okay? and it will know that a signal is coming from that particular tactile sensor. And then uh, with respect to that signal, whatever I design in my program, stand up or lie down or um, uh, move head, whatever I design, it will be executed. So this is sensor feedback control, okay? So sensors are very, very important for robot to behave intelligently. And that behavior, who will create? We will create, okay? And uh, the fundamental for that, you already know, okay, that you have a motion uh, module and you get sensor feedback and the way you would like to exploit that motion module, the way your behavior, robot behavior will be created. And that slowly but steadily you will learn uh, through fun uh, because uh, this is also fun. Uh, you can create own, uh, say, music signal is your input and you can um, make a choreo, uh, choreography out of that music signal the way you want. Okay. Uh, in many cases, no, you know, the, uh, while the, uh, the forward kinematics are fundamental, even those relations can be exploited in a teach pendant mode, which I'm going to tell you in the next. Now, how to analyze motion, say, for example, um, here is my robot, and I have some uh, destination. Uh, okay. Here is my another coordinate frame, okay. uh, which is maybe 
at the corner of a room which has been kept. Okay? Don't worry. Uh, and so this is my inner shell coordinate frame and this is my robot coordinate frame and with respect to this frame all the joints motion are known for the computer. Eh? So this is interesting thing to know. So we, that, that we have done. Okay. And then if I want robot to move following a trajectory, say following a trajectory from here to here, okay, it should move from say A to the destination to goal G. Okay. How it will do? It will actually um, uh, uh, plan a, uh, it has to plan a trajectory, right? And it has to solve the um, uh, simultaneous navigation and mapping problem, okay? Uh, for that, it has to have some visual perception. That means somebody has to tell, uh, some, uh, it has to create a map of the room and somebody has to tell where you are, where you are with respect to what? With some kind of landmark. Landmark could be this mobile coordinate frame, but um, computer has to tell a robot, okay? And then there could be many trajectory, okay. One thing could be allow robot to move, define a loose trajectory, okay, not so stringent, and ask a robot to along uh, all this trajectory, okay, uh, to move its foot, okay. Um, and somehow in the vicinity of that, you just um, see where are those uh, joints, how the joints can be moved, so that this will move from here to here. Joint means he knee and uh, ankle joint, right? Uh, so those joints, how they can be moved, you can get some, uh, ideally uh, we should uh, solve inverse kinematics, which I will talk, uh, but even then, uh, if you do not, because inverse kinematic solution for um, human and robot are not that, <laughs> that simple. The reason I have talked already and I will tell again. But even then, uh, if you just make a trial run that how to follow a similar kind of trajectory by uh, actually walking the robot, okay, that means you are memorizing the joint angle to follow some trajectory and you want to replay those joint angles. It's called teach pendant. Robot is working in a teach pendant mode. Or robot can solve some kind of um, simultaneous localization and mapping problem, okay. And the idea is I do not want a robot of feet to follow a stringent from uh, a trajectory from A to G because we do not want that uh, and we also do not do that. It is not humanoid. You see, take a, uh, just do this, exp uh, do this experiment okay, today with you. Okay? So uh, say you are um, from your reading room, go to a dining room and take a piece of chalk and put it some kind of marks. Okay? and try to follow that mark only, you will see your motion will be slowed down because your visual perception is always giving feedback to the brain. Okay, you started from here, you need to follow this trajectory and you have, whether you have deviated or not, uh, all kind of thing, uh, follow this trajectory, whether all the time it will, it will uh, give a feedback that whether or not you are deviating from a uh, desired trajectory which stringently you have marked. But instead, your mom has called from the dining table, come on, um, okay, and eat. So you are in the um, reading room, you just follow some trajectory, you know um, where the location of the, uh, loosely you know the location of the uh, dining table and you go there, okay. And maybe every time you go from your um, study room to your uh, dining table, all the trajectories every time will be different. But it doesn't matter. The purpose is solved. Okay. So reaching somewhere does not require to stringently follow the trajectory. If you want to stringently follow the trajectory, computation will be heavy, robot will be slowed down, and um, if, it will, if it is not required, you don't go for it. Okay. So you solve um, some uh, simultaneous localization mapping problem and uh, navigate a robot to the destination. There are several uh, algorithms for that and you should uh, study. Okay.
now we will talk about a, um, if it is not possible say i i need that torso should follow a stringent trajectory okay then corresponding to each first of all i will have an input as a trajectory and then i will define several via points of the trajectory and corresponding to those via points i will solve inverse kinematics problem i will have to solve inverse kinematics problem and solving inverse kinematics is also not enough as you know why because follow a trajectory to follow a trajectory say robot i am solving um the this is my trajectory okay this is this is the via point okay and uh, in a slow motion i am showing you so these are my trajectories corresponding to the via point i am solving inverse kinematics in that means how my pain how i need to um, manipulate my finger joints uh, after after putting my hand in the destination where i need to write here it is a uh, board okay on the uh, pain i am writing and then i i am getting some kind of information that okay to follow the trajectory what how the my finger joint should move okay so that's nothing but inverse kinematics in robotic stuff okay we do not know whether we solve some kind of inverse kinematics or not i strongly believe we not so we make pattern matching okay but in case of robot we will have to solve inverse kinematics to follow a trajectory again inverse kinematics will not be enough as you know because i need to have some motion parameter in my model because the same trajectory can be followed in a different motion so like that okay so this is very slow very very quickly so i my planner need to talk about all these things so again we will try to um, convince you that using tooling manipulator that how we are going to solve this um, this problem that is uh, inverse kinematics and trajectory okay how my end will follow a trajectory okay so say this is again l1 length is l2 and say at an instant of time so i parameterize okay so this is a fundamental uh, thing because it's very difficult to actually uh, write the expression for the robot it will be clumsy but what you need is fundamental to know and after that what will happen you will develop a software you will develop the uh, library functions and all the functions will be there uh, inverse kinematics function trajectory planning function and you will call the function and you will uh, design some kind of middleware uh, software which i will uh, talk and uh, you will you utilize them but uh, first you need to know mm. so this is the theta one theta two angle and as you know this is parallel huh? so x equal to l1 cos theta 1 plus l2 cos theta 1 plus theta 2 this is nothing but cos theta 1 plus theta 2 abbreviation right abbreviation cos theta 1 similarly y equal to l1 sin theta 1 plus l2 sin theta 1 plus theta 2 okay now see if so this is a hand robot hand say right motors are there and they are uh, when they are switch on the joint will move robot arm will move and say i am interested to um, follow i am interested to follow this trajectory by the end effector so what there are two choices i input this curve okay and solve inverse kinematics problem and then other thing is that i take the robot physically here and uh, follow forcibly the trajectory and in that process as i collect sample of this data joint angle data and i'll memorize them okay so that next time it is called teach pendant mode you know robot is working in a teach pendant mode and believe me this is a very very popular way of moving robot because in bus kinematics trajectory planning they become then dynamic they become so complicated and boom that planner uh 
actually. And in doing all this complicated computation, what you achieve uh, may not be that great in case of humanoid robot, which is by default imprecise robot. Okay. So forward kinematics, exploitation of the forward kinematics, exploitation of the teach pendant mode, it works well in case of humanoid robot. So say suppose these are my two fundamental equations which we have. And um, I would like to know that incremental change in theta 1 and theta 2, how it will uh, influence the incremental changes in the uh, Cartesian space. So incremental changes in the joint space, how it will influence the incremental change in the Cartesian space. Suppose I want that to know. Okay, so what you'll have to do, I'll have to partially differentiate because this is a function. What is this? So this is a say is a function of theta 1 and theta 2, right? This is another function of theta 1 and theta 2. Okay. So I differentiate this function with respect to 1 theta 1 and then what I, I get minus L1 sin theta 1 minus L2 sin theta 1 plus theta 2. Then if I differentiate, so this is the function of two variables theta 1 and theta 2, right? Then uh, this would be 0 plus L2. And one, two. Similarly, you can do, uh, I'll have to differentiate the second function once with respect to theta 1 and uh, I will get cos theta 1 plus L2 cos. Then if I partially differentiate with respect to theta 2, it will be 0 plus L2 cos theta 1 plus theta 2. Now, if I um, try to know that uh, incremental changes in these values of theta 1, theta 2, how it will create incremental change, how it will create changes in the functional value that is x, y, this functional value. Okay? So that is actually, you know, it's known as Jacobian, manipulator Jacobian. Okay. Jacobian actually by definition is this and physically I told you what it is. Okay. So it is tooling robot manipulator. So I have two cross two matrix it's called manipulator Jacobian. Okay. Manipulator. So what I can do here, I can write that, okay, dx, that is incremental change in x and y, which is a 2 cross 1 matrix, is equals to this Jacobian one. Now I will collect the values and put it here to give you the exact uh, correct set, right? Minus L1 sin theta 1 minus L2 sin theta 1 plus theta 2, okay, first element, second element is minus, first row, second column, L2, sin 1, 2, and then second row, first column, L1, cos theta 1 plus L2, cos theta 1 plus theta 2, and the other one is L2, cos theta 1 plus theta 2, okay. So this is 2 cross 2 matrix. And then you have right. So differentiating the relation, uh, differentiating this function, I got this relation, and this is called manipulator Jacobian matrix. Now, if I try, say, I now I am calling it as a D. And uh, I am calling um, d theta 1, d 
2 and I am differentiating now this entire expression with respect to time. So, you get um, you get equals to j say this is I am calling it okay so this is also in vector form vector form I am writing x so I can write it down and then I can uh, actually uh, this is I am differentiating with respect to time after differentiation I am getting this expression okay? so this Jacobian maps it's a mapping matrix maps the Cartesian space velocity and joint space velocity that's it I need this because in my expression here forward kinematics okay if you go to theta, uh, theta 1 theta 2 I do not have anything related to velocity that means I cannot tell my planner or robot that follow the trajectory but with what speed like this speed or very slow that is not there so that is given by Jacobian matrix this is called manipulator Jacobian matrix okay this is a very important concept first time our uh, model is becoming a little bit more sophisticated and once we have this once we have forward kinematics Jacobian matrix we can do many things which I will tell you okay and uh, these are the mm, uh, basic building blocks with uh, which is required for human and robot and I will again tell you some mm, interesting thing about uh, how now compute all kind of this thing right so now have an infrastructure computing infrastructure Intel Pentium uh, 1.6 uh, gigahertz uh, frequency it is working RAM it has 1 gig, um, gigabyte the storage it has uh, 2 GB plus 8 GB micro SD uh, HC so it is extendable storage built in uh, OS NAO QI ok so that is the built in OS now also has middleware uh, like now lab ok it is a middleware library for developing robotic application in C, C++, Python and MATLAB using humanoid robot now so I will start from here ok and I will try to tell you that ok these are the mathematical computation who is making how, how it is making and how the coordination the motion coordination is done with perception ok which robot try to capture through his vision camera or some other sensory devices that so we will start from here and slowly slowly I will take you to the solving of more uh, about uh, how to solve inverse kinematics with uh, for humanoid robots because so far whatever technology wise you have learned they are almost similar to our um, industrial robot uh, but now they will be different and that we will uh, it will be interesting in the next class we will do that until then um, have fun and stay safe bye bye